<laughs> well, it's Friday. And uh, today, uh, this is the video challenge for self-perfected, best Facebook group that is out there. And the challenge is uh, talking about what I'm doing that is best for all. And so this is a pretty uh, charged topic for a lot of people because a lot of people don't trust themselves to be able to discern and determine what is best for all. But think about it like this. <clears throat> Does anyone deserve to drink not clean water? Like, no, that's ridiculous, right? Like it is best that people have access to clean water. Is it best that not every kid has enough to eat and gets the right nutrition to develop their brain? Like, yeah, that's what's best would be that every single kid can have nutrition to develop their brain so they can grow into a proper functioning human being. Is it best that we're being manipulated <laughs> by social media and, and, and the media to, to think only one uh uh, type of, of, of thought? No, it's not best. Is it best that we have a school system that's designed for the 1900s and automation's coming in to completely disrupt everything? But right now, kids are either at home or at school wearing masks, trying to learn <laughs> through memorization? Like, no, it's not best. So there's basic things that we can look at. Now, do I know exactly what's best in the context of what you should eat for dinner tonight. No, and you can have preferences, that's okay. But in terms of basic human needs that should be met for everybody on the planet, that is what we're talking about. So what am I doing though that is best for all? There's a couple things that I'm focused on. One is taking complete responsibility of myself and who I am. Looking at everything within myself. The good, the bad, the ugly. And writing self-forgiveness on all the bullshit that I've allowed within my life. And that I've allowed within the world. Right now, every time I use money, every time I use the bank, every time I use my car, every time I turn on the lights, I am, I am using the system the complex world system that involves money, finances, energy, everything. And I'm using that. And I'm basically allowing that to, 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 to go on through participating with it. However, that system is also responsible for all the abuse in the world. Because we live in a world where not everyone has enough. Where there are homeless people, where certain countries are screwed over because currency rates. So it's like, there's a inherent level of understanding that's required to realize if I'm using money and I'm benefiting from the world and I you know, have internet and social media and I can make these live streams, like that's also my responsibility to work on changing it. Because I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fed up with status quo. How it's okay for people to just turn a blind eye to all the suffering in the world or people to just be so completely self-interested and absorbed that it's like, all this virtue signaling and everything happening where it's like, I am a, you know, I am this, I am that. And we like identify with these different opinions, not actually factoring in what's actually best. Think of it like this. It's a really cool analogy to look at it. Imagine we're all in a house and we're hanging out and one of us realizes, oh shit, the house is on fire. Okay. So we're in a house, it's on fire. Now, what if you who's watching says, you're, you're trying to go around to tell everyone, hey, the house is on fire. And one of us is like, yeah, well, I'm like making music. So I'm like, I, I, I really want to keep making music. And you're like, yo, but the house is on fire. Like, it's all going to burn down. Like, we're going to die. And someone else is like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it in a minute. But like, I'm just watching this show on the Food Network about how to bake a cake. And like, so I'm just going to do that. And like, you know, like, that's just what I'm going to do. And someone else is like, yeah, but like, I'm like trying to be an influencer on YouTube. <laughs> and you're like, what is wrong with you people? Like the house is on fire. Okay, that's literally what's happening in the world right now. Right now, where everything is headed with AI, with big tech, with automation, with the media, with people getting dumber and dumber, with reading rates declining. We are going toward a cliff 
the house is on fire, and this time the consequences are real. Because we are not far away from a world where nobody has the ability for upward mobility in the social system. There's an article on Forbes that I've posted multiple times and I talk about this, where the World Economic Forum wrote the article talking about in 2030, welcome to 2030, where you own nothing and you rent everything. Do you wanna live in that world? Oh, it's about equality and we all have, or equity or whatever, it's like we all have access to, you know, you know rent stuff. You don't wanna have the ability to own property. You don't wanna have a room or a part of your home where like that's yours. Cause think about this, the World Economic Forum, the people who run that, the people who donate to that, these big companies, are they gonna, it, is Bill Gates gonna just let anyone come in on his property and say, yeah, I'm just actually renting my house. I'm just gonna give, I'm just gonna donate my house to the masses. No, no. <laughs> That is a lie being sold to all of us to be okay with the fact that where everything's headed in the future is there ain't going to be any jobs. A robot or software is going to be able to do pretty much everything that's being done right now. From all the trucking, all the shipping, all the logistics, everything. You see what Amazon does in their warehouses. How one, right now, they basically work people like slaves to, to complete exhaustion. But as soon as there's a robot that can do that work for more, efficient, more efficiently with no sick leave and it can do it 24-7, Amazon does not care. I love during, during like the whole like big wave last, you know, last year of like the push toward like Black Lives Matter, all this stuff, right? And Amazon's trying to post, yes, Black Lives Matter. It's like, Amazon, you don't care at all about life. Like, just look at the culture. It's toxic. It is not supporting life at all. But I'm not here to blame Jeff Bezos. Like, oh, Bezos is so evil. If he were just a good person, it's like, no, because I still buy stuff on Amazon. But I realize what I'm doing. And so my starting point in it is I'm going to use Amazon if it makes sense. Jess and I, we support businesses on Etsy, local businesses. We do that too because we don't want this takeover by Amazon where they consolidate everything and just screw up the whole economy. Like, that's not what I want. But also... Every single day, the work that I do, the people I surround myself with, the skills that I'm building, the effort that I put into what I do is so that I can become the best version of myself so I can stand equal to Jeff Bezos one day and be able to say, hey, Jeff, I see what you're doing, but like, let's actually ensure. So sure, we want to do two-day shipping for everything in the world. Cool. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that if it goes back to that starting point of what is best for all. Because imagine if we had a two-day shipping option or a day shipping, right? Because Amazon's got drones and self-driving cars they'll have and all this stuff, right? Imagine that, but that you could guarantee that every child and family in the world gets a box of the necessities. So enough clothes, enough food, maybe some supplements, maybe you know stuff they can add to their water so it actually hydrates them. Like the basic stuff that can ensure that someone has actual quality of life and dignity of life. But right now we care more about, do I get two day shipping on like this designer, you know, random shit that we don't need. <laughs> That's what we care more about than actually looking at solutions. But it's okay because you may have not even comprehended this before. Maybe this idea of what's best for all is completely new to you. And that's okay. Because about a year and a half ago, this was new to me too. And I heard best for all and I was like, what? How could you ever know what's best for all? But it's not about saying, I know exactly every situation, what's going to be best. It's about the basics of ensuring that human life is met with dignity. So everyone at least has their needs met, where everyone can at least have a shelter. Everyone can at least have food, water, clothing, and education. Because in a world where software can do most of people's work, including doctors, including lawyers, commercial pilots, accountants, even software engineers, there's software that writes software and it's been around since 2016. So for everyone who's coding computers thinking you have job security, you don't. And so let's look at how do we prepare ourselves for a future where automation, technology is all increasing exponentially? How do we prepare ourselves for that? Well, it actually comes back to our education, but it's also the fact that we were never educated because if you went, in, unless you were raised by the elite with private tutors and every single factor that you wanted to learn, 
you did not get an effective education. And I, and it, that, that's, it's just point blank. That is what it is. There's a reason that Bill Gates and them don't send their kids to public school. It's a different mentality to become a leader of the world. You have to be – currently in the current system that we have, you have to be ruthless, cutthroat. And that's why so many people are like, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. And like you really you, – you want it. Your, your thought process is there like I want this. But if you know what the definition of want is, that's exactly what's happening. You want it meaning you lack it. You don't have it. Indoctrination versus education. Yeah. And Jade, it is mainly indoctrination that's happening and it's happening now more than ever. And there's fear programmed into everything. But that's why there are different solutions that we have to allow people and families and parents to take education back into their hands. And we can now put any single child on the same level as Bill Gates or Elon Musk, because it all does come down to vocabulary, which is the amount of words you know, and the definitions you have for those words. Think about Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk on their typical day, how many words they use, how many different departments and different groups they have to talk to and speak to, where they have to understand the vocabulary of how does geopolitics factor in and um, innovation and um, exchange rates and the economy and political policy that all has to fit together so that they can make decisions so that they stay on top and they crush everyone else. And if you've seen what Amazon did to get to the top, it is, it is ruthless. It is hardcore. They would literally operate at a loss just to wipe the other businesses out and then, and then buy them out. And that is the current system that we're all allowing. So back to the title of this video and what I'm all about. What I'm doing that is best for all is one, reforming education, one person at a time, one individual at a time. It's been phenomenal to see the growth that we've had, especially over the past four months of people that really get it, who realize, dang, I want to be way more effective, but I'm not. And so that is first. What I'm doing that's best for all is providing as many people as I can with an effective education so we can all be at the level of Bill Gates. So it's common to be that smart, but we don't have to, all have to be evil. Because Bill Gates, in his current view of the world, he sees that the average human being cannot change. So of course he tries to enslave everyone for his power. I can't blame him. I wouldn't do that because I know that humans can change. But Bill Gates doesn't know that. But that's why I'm preparing myself to be at that level where I can have that conversation with him. And we can go to the World Economic Forum or Davos. And we can have these conversations with these leaders of the world so we can actually create a, a future that's best instead of one where everyone's freaking enslaved, sitting in their home, afraid to go outside because of some virus or afraid to go outside because of whatever. And it's easier to just stay in home, stay home, stay safe, order your groceries in, connect to VR, connect to AR, be on social media and just only care about that. Is that the future you want to live in? Is that the future you want your kids to come into? Where you just don't really go outside and you're afraid of your neighbors? I saw a video today and it was like impulsing kids to not hug each other. What? Imagine being a child. Okay, first off, just look at the research out there that shows how beneficial hugs are, for example. What was the last time you hugged your family? I know some of my family, like, they still, it's like a fear of COVID or whatever. So they, it's like, well, we'll just like see each other, but like not hug or whatever. So it's like, okay, what is the psychological impact of that? Like really, like really looking at that and what kind of world are we letting our kids come into where it's like you're scared to get near someone because you think you might kill them because of this virus. And so let's work to common sense, practical solutions here. So they're removing us from our own humanity without our consent. Yeah, well, Jade, so yes, yes, they're doing it very um, covertly, yet unfortunately, by us being on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and we accept those terms of service, that's actually like legally how we are giving our consent. But it's, it's so like, I, I agree, it is, it is pure evil. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, and where things are headed, and with like CRISPR, and you look at the whole transhumanism thing, look up Ray Kurzweil. He's the head of engineer for Google. One of the brightest guys ever. He, is, he has predicted the majority Oh, with our consent. My bad, Jade. I was, I was reading that fast. So yes, we are consenting to our humanity being removed. So look at Ray Kurzweil and other people that are part of this like transhumanist movement where they literally have the intention of merging us completely with AI, like Neuralink, Elon Musk. And the issue I have with that is that, think about this. You imagine you, you got Neuralink put in your brain because someone sold you on this idea of you're going to somehow be smarter with it because you have access to more information. Sure, let's say you could access 
information faster or something. Okay, now you get a thought of like, oh, I kind of want to eat at McDonald's. You're like, shit, was that my thought? Or did McDonald's just pay some premium feature so that they can impulse me <laughs> with what I need McDonald's and substitute McDonald's for whatever, right? But that's the world that we're entering. I mean, we're already almost there. If you have Alexa or Google Voice in your home, they're literally, even if you unplug it, they're still listening to you. They know what you want. They can almost read your mind. So the technology itself is not evil, but it's who we are within it. And let's all look at that and ask ourselves, who are we? Because it's not about pointing the finger at anyone else. I am responsible and we are responsible because technically we're equal and we are one as life, team life. However, right now we're basically team abuse. And so let's stop that abuse. But it first starts with us stopping abusing ourselves. How many of us have abusive thoughts towards ourselves? Such as, I can't do it, I don't know what to do, Ugh, not this again. Right? It's like that's the abuse that we're allowing within ourselves that you can actually get rid of once and for all through using two tools, self-forgiveness, and there's another cool tool called TechnoTutor, which can help you process that information. So these tools can allow you to take responsibility for yourself, become really effective, and then as you become more effective, that will ripple out into your neighbors and friends and maybe your partner and your kids and whatever. Then it ripples out into your community. And that's what Jess and I are doing here in Minneapolis. And we have a community of people who regularly show up and they want to take responsibility for creating a better world. Because we witnessed last year in the aftermath of George Floyd and the riots and everything, and then it calmed down and peaceful protests and everything that happened here. And there was a group of us that was meeting to start to look at what can we do? There's grants available there's different opportunities available. Like, let's look at what we can do to then now start to stand called the principle of prevention. So it's one thing to have something happen and it's like everyone reacts and whatever. Okay, that's just what's happening. There's a shitload of consequence that we have to walk through. But now we can start to stand as the principle of prevention so we can prevent stuff from happening. Like, imagine you're about to let a new, a new kid come into the world. Let's say you and your spouse or have a kid, right? Is it better to just learn after that kid makes mistakes and maybe falls down the stairs or, you know, um, hurts themselves or accidentally, you know, whatever, like swallows some toy or something? Like, no, you're going to apply the principle of prevention. You're going to look at your environment and say, what could go wrong? You have to trust yourself and your ability to effectively think and process information, that's for sure. But then you look at your reality and you say, okay, what's going on here? And then you're going to all start to realize this sooner or later. That analogy I was talking about of the house being on fire, you're going to realize our house is on fucking fire right now. The world is on fire and nobody really knows, not nobody, because there's a subset of people who do know what to do. But when you start to realize the facts out there of like, the school to prison pipeline. And if a child can't read, the likelihood of them going into jail or being on welfare is extremely high. In Arizona, they decide how many prisons they're going to build based on fourth grade reading levels. It's that accurate of an indicator. Are you okay with that world? I'm not. That's why I work on literacy <laughs> for kids and for adults and for families. And so let's look at this and realize, yes, if you want to be a musician or you want to be a YouTube influencer or you want to do whatever you want to do, cool. Yet, let's look at the fact that the house is on fire. We are driving toward a cliff and we are about to go off the cliff. And if none of us fully step up and take responsibility, we're all going down. And so that's why team life, join the team of people who care about life, the equality of life, the fact that every life matters, and we can sort this thing out. So we produce a result that is actually best for all. And what I'm doing in that is first education, then looking at reforming the economy, finances, and that involves getting into politics. So we can propose common sense solutions so that in real policy where real change happens, we can ensure that people who are writing those laws have principles instead of people who are just there who care about votes or the publicity, or they're, or they're there because they're getting some sort of incentive. What about the incentive of life in ensuring that we have future generations where these kids inherit heaven on earth instead of hell on earth like it currently is? So with that, 
I wish you an awesome Friday. If any of this resonated with you, please reach out. Tonight at 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern, we have every week a group called Self-Perfected. It is an awesome group of people who think like this. And we are dedicated to different parts. Some people are working at, um, some people are working in like doctor's offices. Some people are investors. Some people are um, doing all sorts of things, sales. And and some people are um, uh, like software engineers and um, others are artists and performers. But we all come together every Friday night or Saturday, wherever you are in the world, right? But Friday, 5 p.m. Central, we all hang out. And the commonality we all have is this idea of self-perfection, becoming the best version of ourselves, like actually the best, meaning you have to face your fears and walk through it. (laughs) That is what we mean by self-perfection. It's not being a perfectionist or some bullshit idea you have in your mind of what perfect is. It's about looking at yourself and saying, what is the best I can do with myself right here in this moment? How can I unlock my full potential? And then keep doing that over and over and over and over. And then you're surrounded by like-minded people who do it from around the world. And we start coming together and proposing real common sense solutions that are best for all. So what I'm doing about what's best for all is all of that. If you found any value in this, please share, please comment. We can reach out, we can connect. And then for those interested, you can go to self-perfected.com or you can find the Facebook group through my profile. We would love to have you. You have to apply to the group. You do have to answer a few questions. It's all free, but we intentionally curate it for very high quality people who are interested in actually making a difference in the world. So if this resonates, join the group. You'll make some new friends. You potentially have a whole world open up to you of opportunity. And I wish you all an awesome day where you actually start to realize what is possible within our life because the time is now and if we don't act, we are screwed. Bye, everyone.